Hello, hello folks. Old Twit Talks Cars, hope you're well. Hope you're keeping safe, that's the most important thing. So a very warm welcome to episode 8 of Old Twit's pre-classic predictions. And today it's quite an interesting car in a way because I think it's one of our little forgotten cars. So it's maybe more recent than some of the cars that we've looked at. So it gives you a lot of the modern benefits and the lot modern specifications that perhaps we've become used to and we aspire to. Uh, and yet, just incredible value in my view. Um, and given the mark and everything else, I think they will go on to uh, do great things in the medium term. So we're looking at the Alfa Romeo GT. So let's hop straight into it. The Alfa Romeo GT Type 937 is a coupe uh, that was produced by the Italian automaker Alfa Romeo between 2003 and 2010. The GT was introduced in March 2003 at the Geneva Motor Show and production commenced in November 2003 and the GT was built at the Pont Migliano plant alongside the Alpha 147 and the 149. The bodywork is a classic coupe style but uses a hatchback two-door compared to some earlier booted versions such as the GTV and rivals such as the BMW 3 Series Coupe. The interior is derived from the smaller 147 hatchback and shares many common parts such as having the same dash layout functions, the climate control system as well as having a very similar electrical system. Even some exterior parts are also shared with the 147 such as the bonnet, wing mirrors and front wings. The engine range included a 1.8 TS, a 2 litre JTS petrol, uh, a 1.9 multi-jet turbo diesel and a top of the range 3.2 v6 petrol engine. The GT was positioned as a sports car in the Alpha range along with the Brera which was based on the newer mid-size Alpha 159. In October 2006 Alpha Romeo introduced a 1.9 JTT Q2 version which added a limited slip differential and also a new trim level called Black Line. In 2008 the Cloverleaf model was launched as a limited edition complete with new trim levels, lowered suspension, body kit, 18 inch alloy wheels and was only available in black, alpha red or blue colours. Standard features included power steering, a trip computer, air conditioning, reverse assist, dual climate control, airbags, side mirror defrosters and cruise control, plus options like seat warmers, leather interior, 10 CD changer, satellite, radio controls, and windscreen sensors for automatic wiper activation. So the engines really were fourfold. So the 1.8 TS with 138 brake horsepower petrol engine, the two liter JTS, which put out 163 horsepower, the 3.2 V6 Bursa engine, which gave a very healthy 237 horsepower and sounded fantastic. giving a 0 to 62 mile an hour acceleration time of 6.7 seconds. And then later was the 1.9 JTDM engine, available in two flavors, 148 horsepower and 168 horsepower. Cars can be reliable if they're looked after properly like all cars. I think there's general agreement that the seller speed semi-automatic transmission is not particularly one you want to own outside of warranty so probably those models are best avoided. Uh, the Alpha Red or Rosso Alpha paintwork apparently is the weakest colour in terms of resistance to stone chips and there's quite a big difference apparently in that colour. 
compared to other colors in the range. So something to watch out for there. All engines in the Alfa Romeo GT have timing belts and the original timing belt replacement intervals are clearly too optimistic. So I think they have been dropped in most cases to around 36,000 miles. So you need to look out for, for the sort of car mileages that we're looking out. Potentially you want a car that's had two or three cam belt changes in its life. So it's something clearly to watch out for. The two litre twin spark engine uh, is best bought with documented service history, in which case it shouldn't provide too much problems. And the two litre JTS is Alfa Romeo's first direct injection engine based on the twin spark. So again, probably best to make sure that that car has been looked after, cam belts changed, oil changes, etc., etc., as required. The V6 Busso engine is very, very solid engine apparently and doesn't have any major flaws. Sounds great too. Oil consumption can be a bit higher than a more modern engine, but as long as you keep on top of that, there's nothing to be worried about. The diesel engine is a good one apparently. One significant flaw, and that's from late 2005, they were fitted with swell flaps in the intake manifold. These were originally metal with plastic flaps inside and they were the safer kind but from late 2006 the intake manifolds became plastic with stainless steel flaps inside now these can break off and actually wreck your engine so that's something just to be aware of So over to howmanyleft.co.uk, it's a bit of a pickle here really, there's quite a lot of different models and iterations of this car. So you get into the um, mode of it being all a little bit confusing. So I've also cheated here because as you'll see, when I total them up, there's quite a lot more cars. So this is the second page, which is sort of the continuation of that massive list. So there's quite a lot of cars here. There's about three and a half thousand overall, if I'm going to be brutally honest. So I've decided to just look at the petrol ones because I don't think you should have a diesel in a coupe of this nature. So what I've done is mark these up, this final page, just to clarify things. So there's a total of 3,406. However, if you knock the diesels out, there's about 1,219. So that's what I'm going with. So what I feel is a representative Alfa Romeo GT is this one here. So let's take a little look at this. Sold on the 29th of May, 2020. 18 bids, so quite a bit of interest, um, which suggests that the market is getting stronger for these cars. Um, £1,550 it went for in the end. So let's jump into it. I mean, these cars look great from every angle. Um, I mean, that looks good. I like the colour. Alloys are original. Uh, just a nice looking thing likewise there I mean that you can't take a bad picture of these the angles on these are just brilliant Mr Bertone did a fantastic job in my view nice setting or a horse there uh, this is the two litre JTS so this is the uh, two litre petrol nice big oval exhaust then he's a bit of a shine up but apart from that pretty good yeah, I mean, it's just just a nice looking thing, aren't they? Interior, it's got the black leather, uh, leather door cards, etc. I mean, they're OK. The seats are all right. These are a bit, your centre console's a bit plasticky. And this is what you expect, I guess, from Alpha is these deep hooded gauges. I mean, it's not a disaster. This, this all looks a bit uh, old hat now, but you've got air con in these. They're quite well spec, these cars, to be fair. Um, not being so old. 
Yeah, so that just looks great, doesn't it? Nice looking car, right colour. And there's the horse. I don't think the horse comes with it, but anyway. GCJTS, silver coach work, 64,000 miles, last owner for 12 years, and it's been serviced every year and had a top end rebuild. Drives and pulls well through the gears, soft black leather, ice cold air conditioning, it's a nice place to be. It's got a Bluetooth Pioneer stereo, power windows, mirrors, remote locking, everything you want, supplied with one year's MOT and the added benefit of having the oil and filter replaced. Two keys, service books and manual, several old MOTs and lovely little car. So, you know, I think genuinely these are worth having a look into and getting involved with. This is ideal, service history, one owner for 12 years. I mean, yeah, it's right up your alley and it's 1500 quid. I mean, you can't go wrong, can you? Famous last words. So there we have it folks, that's the Alfa Romeo GT for you. I hope it's been of interest. Now, clearly we need to score this little car. Um, and here's a very quick reminder of the criteria that I use in order to derive the scores. So have a quick look at this and then we'll score this little beauty. Okay, so for criteria one, cost, well, you know, I think these cars are at an all time good value level. So you need to look carefully at them, clearly. You need to ideally find one with service history. I think it's gonna be a two litre for our budget. Um, but the cars are out there, as you've seen. There's, uh, you know, look for yourselves. There's plenty out there under our two grand nominal ceiling. So for cost, I give this little beauty an eight out of 10. Mileage, again, the one we looked at, I think, was mid 60,000s, wasn't it? So, given the age of that car, I think that's great. Um, you, you know, I think that car's got plenty of life left in it. So, again, for mileage, I think they're not going to be high mileage cars because of the nature of them, so they get an eight. In terms of rarity, well, obviously, I've slightly cheated, haven't I, um, in terms of rarity. So, I've stripped out the diesels only because I'm a bit anti-diesels in this type of car. I think if you're gonna have a sporty looking coupe, you need a petrol engine. I'm not against diesels in bigger cars, I've got one myself, but not in a coupe. So I've stripped out the diesels, so if you take the fact that we're just looking at the petrols here, mm, so even taking into account my massive cheat, I'm still not getting quite under the thousand but I think it was around 1,200 cars, wasn't it? So we're getting there or thereabouts. So I think to be fair and to um, just be straight with everyone, I think I can only give this car a three for rarity. Plus factor, I think it's great. I mean, it looks marvelous. It's an Alfa Romeo. I think that's a, a brand of car that everyone that's interested in cars should own at some point in their life. I think it will drive well because it's an Italian car. If you can get the V6, I think that's the sweet spot, but I suspect it's gonna be the two litre for our money. So yeah, looks, uh, brand, I think the interiors are good, the seats at least, I'm not so sure about the uh, the dash and the plastics. Um, so I think really for plus factors, I've gone for a seven. In terms of usability, well, I think it would be a car that you could use every day. I think rear space is limited. I think the boot's okay. Uh, but again, my caveat on these is for a two door coupe, it's never gonna be uh, a nine or 10, is it? Um, so. I've gone for my normal six out of 10 for usability. So overall that gives this little car 32 out of 50. So not a bad showing. I think it's a car that deserves some attention, seems to be completely forgotten. I'd completely forgotten about it until I saw one down the street the other day and took a picture of it. Uh, and then it led me to do a bit more research on them. So I think have a, have a look round, see what you can get. Be careful I think on the uh, service history Avoid the automatic or the semi-automatic. Uh, stick with the petrols just because it's the law. 
and have a great time with it. And I hope to see you again very soon for this video. Please subscribe, please give me a thumbs up, and please ding that bell. Take care, see you soon.